Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Lisa Ruffini, and I'm a customer success manager here at Novo N. And my favorite part of the job is being able to share the innovative work that our customers and partners are doing with the NovoEd platform. So today I'm excited to share with you uh, and introduce to you uh, Andreas Eckhart, Professor of Human Resource Management, and Martina Pumpat, Learning Experience Designer and Change Manager. And today we're going to talk about how the impact of digital uh, transformation and virtualization of the workplace as a whole, um, HR strategy in particular. Um, so the German Graduate School offers a MOOC, a massive open online course that trains digital competencies for the modern workforce with an increasingly virtualized work environment. So I'll kick it off with a brief introduction to NovoEd to provide some context. Uh, and then we'll turn it over to Andreas and Martina. So one thing that we're seeing across all of our partners is really that there is a massive wave of digital transformation going on in business and management training. Uh, and actually, this is across higher education, corporate learning, and continuing adult education as well. Uh, and part of this is being driven by a, a change in demographics and just a change in the modern worker today to being more digitally native, uh, focused on mobile devices and demanding of content and learning anywhere on the go. Uh, but it is also driven by cost. Um, so budgets have remained flat at companies for learning and there's also a lot of travel reduction efforts going on, partly for cost and partly for environmental concerns. Uh, and adding on to this, the fact that the world is becoming much more globalized and so um, companies are much more spread out as well as having the gig economy and extended workforce, it's just become impossible to do executive education or business and management training the way it used to be done. Um, but still, for a small portion of people, they're able to you know, fly into a great in-person program but the vast majority of their organizations have been left uh, unserved, and that's why more and more corporate training and executive education is beginning to move online. So another big benefit is, uh, of this is becoming more agile. Organizations typically used to roll out training with the train the trainer model or executive education used to announce a training program a year in advance to try to get enrollments. And the problem is by the time the training actually hit the individuals, it had already been outdated. You know, the case studies had changed. The companies that they've written about had already gone bankrupt or IPO'd. And, and sometimes within companies, the specific training was no longer as relevant. So being able to move that online and deploy training in a matter of minutes and then update uh, on the fly is making it much more possible to be agile and most importantly, reach an entire uh, organization, or in GGS's case, folks all over the world. So when you're able to take great in-person training and scale it online, so many folks who otherwise would not have had access can benefit. So what do we need to consider when we move trainings online? Well, first, the first insight for us is really to think about what makes for great learning, especially those higher order soft skills. And it turns out it's not really lectures uh, and traditional um, online courses. The way that we've traditionally learned how to be a better leader uh, has been through in-person workshops. It has to be experiential. There needs to be collaboration, role play, feedback and mentorship and coaching. And someone needs to try something, fail at it, get feedback on it, and iterate from there. And so, you know, it kind of makes sense as to why so little of this has scaled online, because if you look at most online courses and online executive programs in the past, they've been designed to replicate the lecture model of training. And what we really need is for online learning platforms to replicate this experiential workshop model. Uh, and that's exactly what NovoEd does. NovoEd is an online learning platform designed to replicate the experience of great in-person learning. Uh, and it's easy to stay on track with to-do lists and timelines that can work with you across mobile devices so that participants, learners, students can use any device anywhere in the world to access their content and collaborate with peers. Uh, and that collaboration is really the key and what makes NovoWood so unique 
is that we're able to put people into teams and work together on projects, collaborate, get feedback, iterate within a small group, but then share that work out with the entire community. And so the content of the course becomes focused more on the team's work and on individual's work rather than necessarily any content from the instructor. Uh, and if you think about great executive education programs you've been in, great business school classes you've taken, that's what's made them unique, right? That there was a small amount of seed content that started the discussion, but then the discussion sort of grew organically and people began commenting on each other's work. Uh, we also support a variety of feedback and mentorship models, both formative feedback and summative feedback. And it's really being able to rate someone's work on a rubric and provide constructive feedback for how they can improve. And finally, you can't manage what you can't measure. And so because NovoEd enables a wide variety of new pedagogies, we've created an entire robust uh, data analytics platform to measure uh, and manage the engagement and the outcomes that are going on in the course. So we work with a variety of organizations that train professionals, uh, and they really fall into two camps. The first are employee training in corporate leadership and development, usually within organizations. And clients there include GE, Comcast, Nestle, Sanofi Genzyme. And the second are organizations that train others. So these are executive education firms, training firms, consulting shops, business schools. So uh, German Graduate School, IDEO, Deloitte, UC Berkeley Haas, uh, Stanford GSB, to name a few. But today we're really here to focus on one of those, which is the German Graduate School. So with that, let me welcome Andreas and Martina and turn it over to them. Yeah, hi everybody. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure here to, uh, to introduce our first webinar at the Nova platform. Last year we already conducted an online course, uh, our first MOOC about uh, human resource management and the influence of the digital transformation. And today's webinar is something like a snapshot about what we're going to talk and what we're going to do in this online course. And uh, I guess it perfectly fits what uh, Lisa's introduction about the current situation on labor markets, as we want to talk about uh, the virtualization of work and opportunity for organizations to transform some parts of the organization into the virtual world or even turn the entire organization to an entire virtual organization. Our, our presentation is entitled uh, The Virtualization of Work and if remote work is the answer for this challenge. Just some quick words about our personal link to, uh, to remote work. My personal link is going back in time to my times as a grad student. Back in the days, uh, I guess I was one of the first who has written a master thesis about the topic of conflict management and virtual teams. And just imagine virtual teams that was at a time when five executives were sitting in a virtual confer uh, video conferencing room and were discussing problems and uh, you had just this really, really bad connections between different continents, even within, uh, within one country. So um, that topic really uh, uh, grabbed my interest in the early beginnings. And so when I started doing a PhD at the university and then started my academic career, I ever, the topic was ever one of uh, the ones that most interested me and so yeah really researching the topic for a long long time and uh, an additional reason is uh, research is mostly structured that you're part of a virtual research team normally um, co-authors of mine are based in the United States are based in Germany are based in, in Hong Kong or China so as a researcher, you're always part of a virtual research team and uh, nothing's better than just yeah, question yourself what you're doing, if you're doing it right or wrong. And uh, yeah, that was also one of my personal motivations. But yeah, just hand over to Martina. <laughs> okay, hi to everybody. This is Martina, right back on track once again. And uh, yeah, when we started to think about this webinar, I really had to remember when I started with remote working and actually, it has been in 2003 because I started as a consultant for an American uh, consulting company, of course, and I was traveling the world and for that um, I was mostly just one day in one month um, attending in the office and for that 
um, I said I started remote work when, when nobody was talking about remote work or the, the, the name was not existing so far. So I do have a very long personal history to remote work, of course. And uh, my situation today is that I do have a mix of remote work. So a part of my work is in the office with my colleagues in the team and another part is uh, for example, uh, setting up concepts, etc. Et this is really about being then in, um, yeah, at home, at the remote working place, and um, then having video conferences, telephone conferences, and uh, it's functioning quite well for myself. So I think we have a pretty well agenda for today. And uh, Andy, would you be so kind to lead us through? It's my pleasure. So we will start, we start out, uh, and basically uh, Liza told you a lot about uh, why this is important, what we're doing, um, why should you care, why is it an important topic. And uh, we will talk, the definition we use for what people are, uh, who are based in remote work or in remote work settings, uh, we call them within this uh, research part the agile employee, we'll define it. But I will also provide you brief insight about what uh, I've done together with my co-authors about the last couple of months. And yeah, most important, provide you some implications why this is really are a benefit for both employees and employees. One of the, the most important parts of our contributions is that we uh, were able to, to sketch out different kind of models of engaging agile employees and I will introduce them to you in the end. And uh, yeah, when you're bored of a lot of research talk, then you get the more hands-on practitioner-oriented insights. And that will be Martina's part. So she will provide you some insights if you're planning in your organization uh, to get more parts of your work uh, virtualized or even your entire organization. So she will really provide you some hands-on hands -on actions, what you're going to do. Last but not least, we, if you're interested uh, in our online course, we uh, explain you what is the link between uh, what we're doing today and what we're doing in our online course. But uh, yeah, before I start uh, with, with the research part, uh, we're also interested in you and your experiences with remote work. So hand over to Martina. Yes, um, because we now talked about our personal links to remote work and we are curious people to be honest and for that we, re would, we would really like to know what is your personal link to remote work so far. So we have, we have four different yeah, opportunities here really. I never worked remotely so far. I do have experience but not in my current job. I'm currently working in a mixed type like I explained it before. And I'm currently a remote worker, so please vote. Okay, so we do not have a lot of newbies in here because we have 7% of I never ever worked remotely so far, but lots of people who say, okay, for me, it's a kind of mixed type as well. And some, of course, have experience in working remotely, not on the current job. And some people are the agile employees and maybe the digital nomads, and they're already cur wor currently working remotely only. Thank you very much for your contribution here. So uh, thank you so much for, for your contribution. That's really interesting. And uh, yeah, to see that uh, we talked to people that, are a lot of, that gained a lot of experience in that field. So. Um, let me share with you uh, why we have done research in that field. And this is uh, co-authored work together with some colleagues from practice, two based in, uh, in the US, both working in the tax sector, and one is based in Germany. And uh, the questions that, the, the overall uh, questions that we had was, we have a lot of, mega trends currently on labor markets and uh, Lisa provided you some of them in the introduction. We are yeah, stepping in the digital age. We have a new kind of workforce that, that were born by using technologies that are much more used to technologies like uh, she referred to them as the digital native. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we've also, in, especially in Western European or in, uh, in Western settings, we've also experienced if we're going to these highly skilled, profiled, white collar worker groups, we experience a severe shortage of skilled labor. So the, the problem is for companies, 
how do you get the good people? And uh, in addition to that, sure, also referred to that by, by Lisa beforehand, the, the pressure for cost efficiency uh, is getting larger and larger. So if the budgets, if you're in HR, and I, I talk as a, as a professor of human resource management, I talk for that topic, budgets really got shrinked down. So uh, you have to work with less money. And uh, if you're now in that situation, you just see, okay, on the one hand side, we don't have enough supply of people, but we use these really high, we need these highly skilled people. We have also some macro trends like demographic change and the digitization, what really happens here is what we refer to, and uh, here we quote uh, the HR, head of HR, one of the leading US tech giants that really face some kind of disruption of the employee-employer relationship. So something needs to be done. And uh, if you're not one of the large uh, corporations like Facebook, Apple, or Google, that get a lot of people on labor markets for their open vacancies. If you're a smaller company and not that famous, but still need these good people, what are you? What can you do? And what is the potential solution uh, for this challenge? And uh, normally, research is more retrospective. You think what happened in the past, and you try as a researcher, you try to explain why that happened. Uh, in this case, we uh, try to get step one step forward. So um, we thought about, okay, uh, you have the problem to get the good people and try uh, customers uh, want you, demand you really to be more flexible in your products, in your innovation process. You have all these macro trends. So it might be a solution if you virtualize work and what I've uh, what I've mentioned beforehand, like uh, virtualizing your entire organization, meaning turning it into a virtual organization on the one hand side, or just uh, trying to virtualize at least some parts or departments of your organization. So, okay, that was our idea. Um, can we virtualize work and not only putting some people, maybe like uh, the majority of you in remote work settings or in partially remote work settings, what happens if we do that really with the the big picture, the entire company or at least parts of the company. So um, first step when you're a researcher, you're going back what uh, has already been done in research. And uh, we were interested in the definitions of the, yeah, the group that we refer to as the agile employee. And uh, what uh, we found is that yeah, this is not so, it's not so easy to, to, to focus on one specific group. I tried to, to nail it down beforehand. So um, basically the agile employee that we are researching uh, in this work goes by many names. So on the one hand side, these are people with a high degree of autonomy uh, that are mostly are uh, assigned to projects and working on more short-term relationship base, but also people that uh, yeah, one more flexible, just in time, extend freelancing work, and uh, that this happened in a remote setting. One thing has the definition of all these different parts of definition uh, has uh, them together in one sense that all of these definitions don't fit the traditional full-time employee model. That it's different. It's that we really experience here some kind of the disruptions between uh, yeah, rigidly defined working hours and compulsory presence. So taking that and uh, going back in time and, and thinking about what kind of uh, what happened over the last just the last 10 years, a lot of positions and a lot of jobs uh, we've never would thought about uh, can be virtualized rather easily. And there are several examples of uh, jobs like lawyers and accountants or uh, doctors, think about the e-health development, about reporters, the press, about advisory, uh, architecture, but also about such kind of, that was uh, what we are doing today, like teaching, like developing, here the platform like Nova Ad, teaching and educating, and also parts like uh, people that are analyzing, for example, your uh, financial situation but also advise you uh, in a certain kind of way or provide you any kind of customer service. So um, some of these uh, job profiles have all been virtualized in the past. Uh, some of them might be uh, virtualized in future. So, um, okay, we are right in uh, the middle of uh, a certain development.
what we tried, uh, as we've seen that, and this is basically the situation, um, what is the agile employee in our research? And uh, to to nail it down and just to compare it, we try to uh, yeah to compare uh, the, the agile employee that we researched in our case study um, and compared that to uh, basically the most famous part of an agile uh, agile remote worker the classic uh, Uber driver. So we, we pick three different dimensions like uh, the agility of uh, the location of the work and uh, the, the length uh, of the contract and also the role and just put these ones when, when people had a high degree of where they would work on the one hand side but also in terms of the role that they can focus on different kind of projects that uh, they are basically assigned to different topics and different projects over time and but also that the length of contract of them is uh, on permanent basis. We just have this group of uh, people that we refer to as this really small kind of highly skilled uh, scarce group of uh, workers. We've done a lot of case studies, talked to a lot of companies and basically we came up with three different uh, companies who were the, the basic part of our work. These are, you see uh, where the green arrows are, Google, Trello and uh, Buffett, the companies from the states that at least have partially virtualized some parts of their workers. These are the observed groups in our case study research and uh, the results that I'm going to do so are basically based on uh, uh, what we've done there. We talked to a lot of people in that field. We talked about uh, to uh, people that uh, were in charge of the process at Google. We talked to for example, the founder of Trello, but also to people that are in charge of uh, the, the startup buffer. Basically, when you do that, so um, our first interest was uh, asking the people, okay, if you do that and if you decide uh, to virtualize your, uh, your corporation, at least parts of it, what are potential benefits for employers and employees? The benefits basically for um, these groups, or at least for, um, let's, let's take the employer side, uh, are really multifaceted. Like uh, on the one hand side, you have, uh, if you're doing that and trying to virtualize work, let people go to remote work settings, you have to a chance to uh, have a much more greater population of potential talent that you can attract for working for your company or that you can recruit for your company. You also have uh, the chance to um, really have some kind of responsive global resources. Uh, Lisa referred to the globalization and uh, I guess one of the, the beauties of remote work is that uh, in the white collar business there's almost no task that is so exclusively relevant that it can be just done by on, on one place from one person at one point in time. So, Basically, what a, uh, somebody in, in Germany, for example, in Munich can do can also be done by somebody who's working in San Francisco or somebody who's working in Mumbai in India or somebody who's working in Beijing in China. So there's a lot of potential going along with that. Another aspect that is really important for employers and, and that cannot be neglected, uh, I refer to the problems of higher pressure for cost efficiency is uh, the potential cost savings. Uh, giving you the example of uh, the Deutsche Bahn, the uh, German railroad company, uh, we have uh, conducted some research with them over the past years and they have several offices spread uh, over across the entire country. And today they have at least rental cost of uh, three offices that are not uh, placed by workers of more than five point uh, zero million euro per day. So there's a lot of potential cost savings if you transform at least some parts of your workforce in the virtualized world. The last part, professional development, uh, I guess uh, Lisa told you a lot about that. Uh, it's a chance to really change the entire model of um, training and developing people the whole way around. Like uh, you can stick to a more individualized approach and you have the chance and you have this uh, experiential learning setting when people uh, develop together something good, learn together to uh, 
yeah, work together, to build together, to develop or design something together, you can also do that in that setting quite well. And that uh, this is partially, mostly the bridge also in, yeah, to the development of an end-to-end -end way how people learn and train themselves. In terms of, uh, in addition, the question but is, uh, okay, there are potential benefits, but uh, if you're thinking about your company and your setting, the question will be how much agile uh, does really a company need? And uh, as always in research, there is no concrete answer. It's just there are basic different settings um, that can be done, and it really depends a lot about one word, and that's this context. So, Based on the, the research that we have done, we uh, were able to yeah, cut down two new forms of uh, an organization in terms of how they treat and how they work together with remote workers. Having the, the traditional setup uh, in the left, like uh, you have employees that work in the office, that have standard office hours, um, yeah, you just source for local talent and uh, have a physical office location like the example that I was mentioning in terms of the Deutsche Bahn in Germany, for example. Having that on the one hand side, based on our case studies, um, here we have the examples of, of Terrell and Buffer. You have different opportunities, uh, what you going to do and how do you apply the, the, the agile workforce for working into your company. First design, uh, we labeled as agile by design. And here in that way, uh, Trello, uh, Buffer would be an example for that. You really completely, you're virtualizing your entire entity. So you just work with 100% agile employees. So that means you're uh, working flexible, overlap across different kind of time zones, and you have the opportunity to source for global talent. This is slightly different to the approach by, uh, by Trello. And uh, this is basically, I guess, also the setting that uh, you referred to in our poll in the early beginnings, that you're working in some kind of a currently a mixed, a mixed type of uh, remote working setting. This is uh, the, the example of Trello is uh, we have the, the classical 50-50. And here, uh, this is part, and so we refer to it as agile by demand, that in some ways uh, the company explained, okay, there is no chance that uh, we can have all people in the same office. Although we would love to have that, it's definitely not possible as we are really working uh, in a field where we have to compete with much uh, bigger companies, a lot of greater financial resources and then can uh, attract uh, talents much more easily. So if we want, really want to stay surviving, um, we have to do it. It's, uh, it's, it's in really in this way, it's a necessity. And so you have a mix of people working in the office and remotely. But uh, this is greatly um, divided in terms of yeah, virtualizing different functions, not only just virtualizing pe people in different departments. The part here which is interesting but also challenging is that still office hours are the dominating aspect. Uh, otherwise, the rest is uh, in some ways is flexible. But also sourcing for... Um, Talent is a mixed approach. Uh, you try to, to get people um, from across the globe for, uh, for your virtualized settings, but also as you have still fixed office places in terms of uh, Trello this, uh, is uh, New York City, you still have to also source on at least a higher local range to get your people. If these are the different models of uh, engaging employees, um, how can you do that? And uh, there are several ways, and I would love to discuss that uh, with you in more detail in the Q&A session. Um, what we basically uh, developed is uh, if you are an executive and you plan and you have these challenges that I was referring to in the early beginnings, and uh, now you get the decision, okay, what to do? So um, how can you get as an entity, how you can get agile and how can you incorporate a remote workforce? There is some kind of uh, yeah, rules that we learn based on the case studies that we've done. They are important. And uh, for example, it's uh, in a remote working setting, it's really important 
either way, if you do it in an entire virtualized setting, like the example of Buffer, or just in a partially virtualized setting, it's really important to set out the rules of play. So um, if people are working in different time zones and uh, people working on different locations, some people work at home, some people work in co-working spaces, some people work in restaurants, some people work even at the beach, it's really important to set the rules of play and that is most important still is the project itself and the people working in that project. So uh, most, much more important than just in the, in the regular office setting is that there is no single rider. So you're even, it's even better or it's even more important to grab and develop a team instead compared to the setting you're just working in one office. But uh, if you do so, and team working and uh, working together as a group is really important, is um, yeah, you have to divide your, your projects into smaller teams. As uh, uh, from a control aspect, and uh, if you're interested in the, the success of your project teams, uh, this has to be at least manageable. So complexity uh, shouldn't be that high and it's getting higher and higher the higher the, the team sizes. So just keep it to smaller teams uh, compared to when people would work in the same location. Yeah, that you have the chance and this is really important on two different uh, angles. Not only that people really work uh, for the project success on the one hand side, but also that they work together. So helping each other, although you're not on the same location, is really important. And uh, as this is the case, uh, performance measurement will change. Uh, it's not so much about just project success, develop, yeah, uh, delivering your project on time and budget. It's also really important uh, to measure uh, yeah, something like team cooperation, team trust, the collaboration across different time zones. So um, social aspects will be much more important if you measure performance of the people working in these work settings. As uh, partially research showed in the past, uh, people working in, uh, in the fixed offices and people working in the remote settings, people in the remote working settings have a good feel about uh, their relationship to be, uh, people working uh, in the standardized office setting, that uh, they're doing at least the same amount of work or even more and are more productive and so on and so on. But imagination and perception is always an issue, so people that were um, asked in the office settings regarded the people working in the, in the, um, in the remote settings as less productive and uh, as less contributing to project success. So measuring on different levels uh, is definitely important. But most important, and Martina will talk about, uh, if you change the location uh, to a virtualized environment, what you have to consider what is really important is think about the people and think about their relationships. So um, people mentioned to us in the interviews, uh, as we were able to establish a relationship of trust, that we can trust each other, that others delivering their outcomes on time and that everything is fine, then everything is good. And in the end, it turned out uh, we were just guessing as we talked with them, okay, uh, trust will be an issue, and if you see each other just once or twice a year, uh, there shouldn't be that trust. And uh, actually, the opposite was the case, and people were referring to us. No, uh, as we are in this uh, specified work setting, we don't see each other quite that often and uh, have really to build a trust that uh, we can establish a real social relationship. So building environment of trust is really important. I guess that's uh, a good bridge uh, handing over to Martina and uh, she can tell you something about how you can establish that. Exactly. So thanks a lot, Andreas, for your insights uh, into the interesting topic of Agile Performance Framework. And uh, yeah, of course, we now know there are some benefits or lots of benefits and we know the different models, we know the history. But the question is, of course, exactly now, how do I do that? How do I set up an environment for Agile employees? And for that, um, I'm here today to show you some insights from my side. So, first of all, 
please avoid mismatches because you can see it in that picture. It will lead to very, very sad employees. Of course, you don't need sad employees. You need highly engaged, highly motivated, laughing and happy employees. Yeah, and so how to do that? And um, it's like a kind of uh, magic recipe as HR you need to know about. And I brought with me today the ingredients for this magic recipe and we will talk about it on the next slides. So first of all, short delay. Yep, perfect. Let's talk about the employee. Um, what does it need to find and nurture in re remote employee because when you already have found a remote or agile employee you do have to do a lot of things as well to keep them and to retain them and uh, these are some important factors here on this slide. So first of all it's really about the mindset and it's really about the attitude. You have to look out for people that are highly self-motivated and highly self-organized and now I can imagine your question is, okay, how do I find out? Because it's not something they've written on the forefront of their head. I am highly self-motivated. So as HR person, it's, um, yeah, there is a trick, of course. When you look out for these people, when you recruit them, you can really ask specific questions. So for example, ask the question, okay, how do you organize your working day? How do you organize a project? How do you organize your task? How do you do that? How do you bring structure into the day? And how do you make sure that you as an individual um, really keep to your deadlines? And how do you make sure to be on track all the time? And um, you can really find out by asking, tell me about a time in your past when you were in that situation and how exactly were you dealing with that situation? Just talk about it. Tell me the story. Tell me how you do it. Tell me the steps you had in the back of your mind um, and you will find out if this person will have um, maybe an immediate answer because this person is absolutely self-organized and has high autonomy and can do that or if this person will start to think about it hmm I have to think about it I would do it like that so this is already a kind of indicator of people are used to that or not and another good question here as well is really talking about um, finding solutions in tricky situations so you are in front of your computer something is happening what do you do and in case somebody is then answering now yeah I will go back to my manager and ask him or I will immediately go back to my by colleague in the neighbor hmm, that might be not so good because this person has to find solution on his or own own so once again a really good indicator here and as Andreas already said the relationship is a very important factor here as well so these people have to be able have to be able sorry to create really good relationships they have to do it easily they have to do it deeply because it's not the face-to-face -face contact every day they have to find different ways to do that and they have to yeah really execute that so once again you can ask risky tricky questions here or smart questions you can ask how do you build and foster personal relationships just how do you do it how do we establish trust so how what do you do as a role model for trust and what do you expect from your from your peers here and once again good question when there's a conflict arising, let's imagine there is a strange email appearing, uh, you have a video conference and somebody is somehow acting strange and you're not sure what's, what's happening, what do you do? Because you cannot grab these colleagues, go into the coffee kitchen and say, let's talk about it. There seems to be a misunderstanding here. You have to find ways per email, per telephone, per video to solve that. And for that, you need the special skill and a special attitude here as well as well and once again ask for specific situations in the past uh, ask think about a time in the past when you had a conflict with a peer somewhere in in the world maybe not uh, right to you at the office how did you do that how did you deal with this situation and what were your steps and um, yeah and you really need to look out for these persons because otherwise when remote working is really not um, so much fitting or matching they can really feel lonely in front of the computer and being and feeling lonely might need to sickness of course and of course as we said we need happy and engaged employees so 
Let's imagine we found the perfect remote employee. We need something additionally. We need the perfect manager for that. So once again, it's about a special kind of mindset. It's about a, a special kind of attitude because remote work is really about trust. Imagine you got a manager with uh, an attitude of micromanager. How will he or she control everything his remote workers will do? It's just not possible and it will not lead to good results. And for that, you need somebody who is really able to trust his people in front of their computer, maybe spread out in the world. So once again, you can ask risky questions. You can ask, how do you really create trust with your team members and how do you do that? when they are not in your office? How do you do that when they are on the other part of the world? And how do you do it when they are in totally different time zones? So tell me about a situation in the past where you had this and how did you deal with that? How do you do that? And how are you acting as a role model for trust for your employees? And how do you really make sure that you care for your people even when they are far, far, far away and as I said, in different time zones. So this person should up, come up immediately with very good answers on how to set up trust, how to nurture that, of course, and how to really care for people that are not around in the office. And um, yeah, another point here is, of course, um, b about being transparent and about clarity and expectations, because there's not the opportunity, as I said, to just grab somebody and go into a short conversation, just clarify something. You really have to think about when this person is sitting in front of the computer, maybe in a different time zone, and he or she has to fulfill a task. This person needs to know, what do I have to do? And of course, additionally, please, the why. Why do I have to do that? Because this helps a lot to have the context and to know what's the purpose. So make sure once again, um, this has to be very clear for, for the remote workers, for the agile workers. So once again, ask the manager, how do you make sure and how did you make sure in the past in specific situation that expectations were clear, that goals were clear, that everybody knew exactly where they were standing and what to do. And you will find out if this person will have immediate answers because he or she is just quite adapted to that and this is uh, really anchored in the mindset or if that will be a very tricky thing and this person is not able to answer that. Okay, now we got the perfect employee, we got the perfect manager. And now we need one additional ingredient to the magic recipe. We need the framework. And with the framework, it's really about technical things. Um, we have, yeah, 67% of people today in our audience who are working in a, in a, in a mix of rem, uh, remote and, and office. And I think everybody of you can imagine some situations where suddenly everything stopped and everything was breaking down and we were just banging our heads on the keyboards because we had a deadline, there was really pressure, we had to deliver something and suddenly the computer just said no. So what do you have to do in that situation or what do you have to offer? these person need really quick access to support. There's no way to say there's a ticket system and they write an email and they will come up uh, or they will receive a, a friendly email with, thank you very much for your concern. We see you have a problem and we will make sure that we come back to you within 72 hours. This is of course uh, absolutely not the way because your remote and agile workers, they need immediate access to help. Make sure that they will support, get support immediately, they have priority. And um, with the support, of course, um, we need respective computer, a broadband internet connection. We need the setting within the company. So we need the tools. And often we see that the tools are forbidden, for example, for video and telephone conferences by uh, IT for security reasons, then offer something else because they need it. Make sure they got the right tools to do their job. And make sure, on the other hand, they got the right processes. So think about are there processes in the company where, there, where people, for example, have to print something out and then bring it to another person. This is not possible for remote worker, workers. So make sure there is a smart technical solution for that, that they can do it in a different way. And another thing, uh, the legal framework in lots of countries, 
there are very strict uh, frameworks and even rules in Germany for example we have some very special things and yeah you really have to check what is possible what is allowed and um, you have to make sure HSR persons for example that manager and an employee really are sure about they know about it they how to they how to know, know how to deal about it <laughs> sorry for that and really keep to the rules here and uh, this is of course in the responsibility of HR as well so these are the magic ingredients for our perfect remote work setting and what you heard about now is we heard from Andreas why it's increasing, what's the history, what's the definition, what are the opportunities, what are the benefits and of course the two models, very important, the differences and from my side the magic ingredients for the recipe, you heard about the employees, you heard about the managers, you heard about the framework and coming back to the headline of our webinar today and the question is remote work maybe the solution of today or too many of today's corporate challenges uh, I would say yes it is in case you keep not in case and keep in mind of course the things we mentioned today in our webinar and I missed something I think yeah because I said I was talking about mindset I was talking about attitude I missed the skills Andreas and this is something very important because there's one extremely important skill you need to have today as an agile worker and this is about digital competence and I think you have some smart words to that I try to have some smart word about that, but <laughs> thank you so much, Martina, for, for your part and uh, the insights from your daily work uh, about how to manage remote workers and uh, what do you have to take in into account if you are in the management process in HR. So, uh, yeah, Martina mentioned the, the really the necessity of digital competence. It's we talked about the setting, we talked about uh, the frameworks, uh, we talked about different management models, how you can do that, but we both really emphasized that it's so important not only that you're open-minded, that you want to do it, but also that you have the competence how to do that. And this is, yeah, this is why we um, developed this course. And uh, yeah, the course is not far. It starts here in OAD at October 1st. So we would be glad if you join that. That's uh, the most important part uh, of our course is that we try in several different kind of uh, team projects to deliver digital competence. And that you as a part, some of you are already in a mixed setting or some of you are in a complete remote setting, how you can enhance your digital competence if you work together closely in team related virtual projects. We will uh, enhance this by providing some cutting-edge research findings and uh, as a really important part, we have some insights of HR experts that uh, we interviewed from practice, how they manage uh, yeah, this process in large-scale or small companies. The setting is, uh, yeah, as Lisa uh, provided a lot of insights about that in collaborative team projects, and uh, yeah, we put a special emphasis of uh, networking with peers. So uh, if you're interested in that topic and if you think that digital, you need more digital competence and you're interested how the entire digital transformation infected uh, the management of human resources, yeah, you should join our course and we'd be glad to welcome you. In this case, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andreas and Martina. Um, so we just have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Uh, the first is, uh, what types of digital tools do you employ or do you see that, you know, companies with remote workers employ to ensure a healthy, consistent relationship and communication within and among teams? So um, this person, you know, said as an example, Asana. I know you mentioned Trello. Are there any others that you've seen that are very, becoming very common? Yes, um, uh, Trello for example uh, for project management but we started to work with Slack some months ago and uh, this is really perfect because email is a kind of 
I don't like it so much, to be honest, my, um, personally, and, and Slack is just, um, it's a fantastic communication channel to, to really chat, to talk, to, to, yeah, to use emojis as well at the working place, to be honest. People love that, and uh, for that, this is something I really can highly recommend as well. And we use a lot, really lot, lot, lot of video conferences, um, and we even started to do brainstormings with video or in video conferences and it's working quite well and we just love it. Let me just add something to that and uh, it's not so much really related to tools but it's about uh, the sense of the tool. So uh, what we heard about uh, in the case studies that we've conducted that it's important that you not only provide tools that enhance team collaboration, it's also important to provide tools that are just based on establishing social relationships. The variety is amazing on the horizon, but uh, provide these people the chance also to have some kind of a space where they just can yeah, do something what they otherwise would do in private. And uh, this needs to be added in any kind of way. Make sure that your people meet at least on some occasions worldwide and make that a special place and a special occasion for sure. And I do have another addition I can think about because I had a magic moment last week when, when a group of people, not within the company, but outside on a conference, were working on Google Docs together for the first time because somebody was writing and his neighbor started writing as well and they said, I can see you writing in the same document. And this was just a great uh, situation because they, they even didn't know about it before and um, it was just fantastic. Great, thank you. So uh, another question that has come in, um, and this is directed at Martina. Uh, mentoring is becoming very popular today for cultivating a better workplace for employees. How would that work in a remote setting? What has your experience been? Um, personal experience I can add as well. Um, when I was working as a consultant, I had a mentor um, first in UK, then later on in US. And of course, we had video conferences because there was no way to travel all the time for our meetings. And um, as I said, you need a good connection, you need great tools for that because otherwise it's exhausting. But on the, when this is okay and you got that, uh, it's perfectly working. It, it's maybe at the beginning uh, with video conferences is a little bit strange, but people get used to that very, very, very quickly. And then it's something common. You just do it every day and it feels like being in the office and having this person sitting in front of you. And uh, it's like having small rit rituals like, okay, um, the, the one person is grabbing up a coffee and then say, okay, the other one is picking up a coffee as well. And then prosting and cheering and saying, hey, let's have the coffee together. So they are just ways, um, there are uh, at the moment other ways in for video conferences, for example, there are cards. So for example, you 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 put on a card, um, um, I have to leave for a second or something like that. So lots of things are going at the moment um, to, to make that more funny, to make that more comfortable. Just look out for the tools. There is so much in the internet available for free. It's just fantastic. Great, thank you. Uh, another question, um, what are some factors, uh, and maybe Andreas you can address this uh, in, you know, that you may have come across in your research that um, tend to play a strong role in people's preference for agility or uh, in their, you know, decision to really want to work remotely? The factors uh, driving employees uh, in terms of what kind of setting they want to work in have really dramatically changed over the last 10 years. Like uh, uh, we can experience uh, in close collaboration with uh, the increasing digitization. We also see an increasing kind of value change and that people value complete different aspects in terms of the work. So. Uh, the content of the work itself become more and more important. So uh, provide your employees the chance, uh, yeah, to have uh, to have a voice in terms of what kind of project they think they are best fit in. Provide your your people the chance um, that uh, they have at least some kind of flexibility 
how they can do that and how they can proceed within this project because uh, the factors most important is content so the the challenge itself and uh, the chance for flexibility and this is related to flexibility in private life like uh, work life balance have uh, uh, have time to uh, to take care of your kids or have time to to do some free time activities for sure so flexibility and uh, the content of the the project itself is really met most. Great. Well, thank you both so much. We're about out of time. Um, I also just, just want to share, if so if folks are interested in registering for the course, registration is open now, am I right? Right. Yep, and so they can go to novoed.com slash GGS dash digit HRM, so D-I-G-I-H-R-M. Uh, thank you both once again so much. This has been incredibly uh, insightful and enlightening, and um, thanks for being a great partner of NOFLED. Thanks. Nice it was a great you. pleasure. And exactly. we welcome you to the course. See you in the course. Yeah. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.